Welcome to the FRIP VT user meeting. We're thrilled that you're here and we're excited if you're watching the replay. We've taken the summer off because, well, I've had lots of wonderful adventures, just came back from England, and I seem to have been on a mission to out-eat my exercise program and outspend my income. So if you have any friends you want to recommend for Fripp VT, this is a good month to tell them to take a trial. Naturally, we are celebrating not only a very exciting guest, we're celebrating and introducing some new features in your Frit VT you might not have noticed if you haven't been in in the last few days. We have some new content, and for those of you we're very grateful who've been around from the very beginning, we're going to show you how in Frip VT with your membership you will never, ever run out of great content. More about that. And so, first of all, it's my privilege to introduce to you my hanging around buddy, best selling author, keynote speaker, Susan Rowan. Say hi, hi Rowan. Hello. <laughs> and of course, Paul will tell you how you can engage and interact with us and introduce the first poll. So take it away, Paul. Absolutely. Hello. On the right hand side of your page, you will see a chat box. Within that chat box, you'll be able to ask your short, specific questions throughout the call that we'll try to answer live. So get them in as sooner rather than later. Our polling questions will also show up in the same area of the screen. We're going to go ahead and start with the first polling question. When you walk into a room of people, especially strangers, do you feel comfortable? Just click yes or no and then click vote. Good. And while our friends are doing that, Susan, now you are not only a popular keynote speaker, let's count how many books you've written, how to work a room, the secrets of savvy networking, what do you say next, how do you create your own luck? Have I missed any yes. others? Yes. Face-to-face, uh, -face, how oh. to reclaim the personal touch in a digital world. That's right. And um, and something that was strictly an ebook, which was um, oh, I networking beyond the buzzword, and then an ebook on my site that is called um, the nuances of business networking, and then an ebook and an audio book called Rowan's Rules: How to Make the Right Impression. Well, good. Well, feel free as our conversations go around to introduce any of your ideas from any of your books because as we're buddies and now you know how to make webinar jam work, we can always have you back again for another session. So, uh, Paul, let's see. Do we have an answer to our polls? Absolutely. We have 64% say they do feel comfortable and 36% say that they do not feel comfortable. Good. Well, what do you have to say about that, Rowan? Um, uh, abnormal people. No, yeah. because really, I, I'm really impressed because in most audiences when I speak, really rarely 10% of the people say that they are really comfortable walking into a room full of strangers. The interesting thing about that is that actually mirrors the research on shyness, which says... 90% of us feel daunted or uncomfortable or shy as we walk into a room, a convention, a party, a fundraiser with people we don't know. So you have a more outgoing uh, group that are VT users. And, and certainly, Rowan, I'm sure you'll agree, I am comfortable in many circumstances. However, there are situations that I am not as comfortable and I'm sure our 65% who are gung-ho, if you go to the National Speakers Association, if you go to Young Company Meeting, uh, and, and we have a lot of sales professionals, of course, who are more gregarious, but even then, you, we all have situations where it's a little more nerve-wracking. We think everyone's smarter than we are, or more interesting than we are, or we're the youngest or we're the oldest in the room. Well, so, that's true. Yeah. Good. Now, I was talking to an authority, somebody in our industry, and when I was talking about you being a guest, they said, the Bible, 
Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and Susan Rowan's How to Work a Room are three probably of the most evergreen books. Now, what do we mean by evergreen? Evergreen is the please applies no matter what year, what decade, what century. You know, we keep on reading Shakespeare, but Dale Carnegie, his principles have always applied because they're about communication and connection. And how to work a room is the same way. In fact, there were people that said, well, how to work a room sounds like the sequel to how to win friends and influence people. But I, I'm thrilled to be within the mentioned with the Bible and Dale Carnegie because Dale <laughs> Carnegie actually is the Bible of interaction. So yay, that's good news. Perfect. Now, when, because your book was first introduced, what, 28 years ago? Exactly, 19. In fact, this coming November, it'll be 28 years. I was talking to someone that works for my publishing company who wasn't born when my book came out. Uh, well, what can I say? Now, you th at that point, when it first came out, you were on the front cover of the Wall Street Journal. I was quoted in the Wall Street Journal, and I was on the front cover of the lifestyle section of USA Today with, by the way, the nerdiest picture ever. They And they took two rolls of films at the event, and I go, you took two rolls of film to pick the ugliest picture? But that's what they thought sold. And then the next day, I was in the Chronicle, and then the next week in the New York Times, because at the time, the concept of how to Work a Room was so new. It was the first book like it, and it really answered the question for so many of us that are uncomfortable. And by the way, maybe your audience is more comfortable, but back 28 years ago, people were uncomfortable walking into rooms full of people they didn't know. Now, one of our friends made a, a comment that you often use in your speech uh, because one of the comments, and I believe it was in the Wall Street Journal, about it was the perfect book for a certain oh. demographic. <laughs> yeah. No, the Wall Street Journal. I mean, I'm a former teacher, so I was thinking I wrote a good book. And this is the review in the Wall Street Journal. At last, the perfect how-to book for shallow people. I was so crushed. And then I went to the chamber. We used to go together. And the head of the chambers said to me, don't be so upset. You must know nothing about marketing. What do you mean I know nothing about marketing? He said, that's 40 to 50 billion <laughs> potential book buyers. So <laughs> I looked at, I was so crushed. And maybe that's the lesson. I was so crushed by what I read. And then someone else helped turn around my thinking and then I turned it into this opening story where I laughed at myself. Yeah. But then the follow-up is the, the million people that bought my book have not bought that because they're shallow. People mm. buy it because they're shy. Exactly. And it, it makes a great opening vignette. And it, it really true. So what, Rowan, what is the secret? What is it about your book? that has made it equally applicable today as 28 years ago and everything in between? Well, the truth is people haven't changed. Technology has changed. Circumstances have changed. But there isn't a person that doesn't get an invitation who doesn't think, oh, can I go? Do I want to go? Who am I going to meet? What am I going to say? So I think that self-questioning has not changed. So that's what I think keeps it evergreen is, in fact, Patricia, people are more shy. And now we have people self-identifying very publicly about being introverts. So there was someone said, good, more, more potential book buyers for you. So I think I wrote a book that people, and this is for those of you thinking of writing a book, that people perceive as their own need, not just what I think that they need. And, and Paul, can you tell us the second poll? Absolutely. The second poll is, have you ever heard of, read, or purchased How to Work a Room? All right, good. And while you're answering that, uh, now, Rowan, uh, you teach your clients how to manage the mingling. Now, I think I know what mingling means, but how do you manage the mingling? Well, first of all, 
the best thing I could tell people and I tell all the audiences is prepare before you go. I mean, why waste the time to put on a new tie, a new blouse, uh, get the office organized so you could be away, but not prepare for where you're going to spend two hours or maybe even two to three days. So how you do that is number one, do your due diligence, go to the website, see who will be there. The other thing is prepare so you're comfortable. Prepare that self-introduction, which Patricia, I always quote you. And that self-introduction has three unique Rowan and Fripp aspects. The first is it's not a 30-second upchuck of your elevator pitch. It's seven to nine seconds. It's a pleasantry. Second part, it's linked to the event you're at, how you introduce yourself at your local chamber might be different than at a fundraiser for breast cancer, or who knows, maybe someone's friend's wedding. And then the third part is a Patricia Fripp, because you once said to me, Roanne, please tell people, don't give your title. Hmm. What you do is give the benefit of what you do. And if you could say it with a little lilt in your voice, you allow the other person to ask you the first question. And then I quote you all the time, you said to me, and then that gives the other person the feeling they started the conversation so they feel more confident. You ask, they asked you a question, you answer, and then this is the row and specification. After you give a little bit about yourself, you stop and you turn to the other person and say, and what about you? Mm-hmm. And then you're in a conversation. And by the way, for all of Frick BT people, what about you starts the conversation. But remember, people want to talk to you. They don't want to answer 20 questions. So you have to bring your stories, your outlook, the things you're working on and interested in to every place you go, because that's what makes people feel comfortable and connected to you. Well, you will be glad to know, Roanne, that 50% of this audience, at least the live audience, we don't know about the people watching the replay, have not heard, read, or purchased how to work a room. So you have a potential. I do, but here's the thing I would say for the other 50% that heard of me, if you heard of me, great. If you read the book, wonderful. But for those of you that bought the book, thank you so much. (laughs) Okay, good. So, all right. So we have, we're going to prepare in, we're going to prepare in advance. We're going to have our self introduction and understand this is a conversation and you're not giving a, a, an info commercial. You're literally having a conversation. Any other suggestion to manage the mingling? Yes. Read a newspaper, listen to the news, think about what you would be interested in talking about And come, even if it's only on your phone or in your brain, come with three prepared topics that you're interested in to talk about, that you have some stories about that relate to the current events. That way, if there's a lull, you have conversation. And, you know, it really isn't big. And this, I know, leads into something else. It could be about how long it took you to get there. Did you find a parking space? What the traffic was like? What the weather you endured? It could be about the new restaurant, it could be about, and I know a lot of people may not expect this of women, but a lot of us do talk about sports. It could be about your favorite team. It could be about your favorite book. And I'm putting in a little plug there. And it could be about, it could be about a movie you saw. I just saw a movie that I love, 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 Hunt of the Wilder People. I told you about it because it was set in New Zealand where we were together. You know, don't be afraid to share, recommend. I ate at the best place. It's so personal, it connects people. But here's the third part of what you prepare to get ready for an event. And that's the attitude. And I'm not going to give you some blather about attitude, gratitude, altitude. What I'm going to say is go everywhere to have a good time. Because if you go with that mindset, you will have a good time and the room will work you because people want to be about around the person that looks open and warm and engaging and smiling and looks like they're having a good time. So it's not Pollyanna-ish, but if you go with the attitude, hey, this is great, I'm going to meet people and have fun, you're going to see you will. 
All right, good. Now, it sounds like some of this could be considered small talk, and I must admit, in most of my life, I'm more of a bottom line, let's let's get to the point, girl. But you emphasize there's an importance in small talk. You know, I, since I wrote the book, also having been married to someone that had the attitude, he used to say to me, well, get to the bottom line. And I remember when I was teaching and telling him a story, I'd say, if I knew the bottom line, I wouldn't have to tell the story. <laughs> But, you know, it's the little things that connect us. It's how we find out that someone grew up in the same town. It's how we find out that someone likes the same team. I, I'm from Chicago. If I find out someone's from Chicago, first question, where did you eat pizza? You know, are you a deep dish? Oh, no, you're a thin crust person. You got to <laughs> be kidding. And, you know, it sounds silly, but food is such a big connector. And, it's little things, and you can always find something if we are well read. And this goes back to my fifth grade teacher who said, if you want to be a good conversationalist, you must be well informed. To be informed, be well read. Newspaper people love me because I say, read the newspaper. And you know, I just heard someone say something that kind of contradicted something I'd been saying, and I think they're right. I'd been saying, you can now curate what you want and get news delivered to you. And I read something where someone said, that means you're only reading what you're interested in and you're not getting a broad view, which would help you talk to other people about subjects you might not be interested in, but they are interested in. All right, good. And certainly, if you want to uh, send your questions or comments, uh, Paul, do, I, I know there's some chat, but do we have any specific questions at this point? Yes, actually, someone asked if you could touch on what the what the three parts of the introduction are once more. Oh, Perhaps yeah. you can give an example, Rowan, so it makes it easier. Yeah. Okay, the, the three parts of the introduction would be, oh, hello, um, I'm Susan Rowan, and I'm here because I was invited by uh, Patricia Fripp, because I'm also a speaker, and, well, I, I turn people into mingling mavens. So there I've given um, the seven to nine seconds. Mm -hmm. I let people know who I was. I linked it to that event because people need context, whether you're going to a wedding, whether you're going to a convention, whether you're going to a fundraiser. And then the third part is the benefit of what you do. Um, my, my favorite, and Patricia knows, was the gentleman who I asked what he did, and he said, I help rich people sleep at night. What? And what I said to him was, what, you're a pharmacist? As it turns out, he was a financial planner. What a clever way to give me something to talk about and to be engaged. And to this day, Dennis and I still talk because he gave me something that was fun. So if you can do that, seven to nine seconds link to the event, give a benefit of what you do, not your title. And now you are very good at finding business connections at social engagements such as weddings. Can you give a specific example? Okay. Oh, uh, do you mean when other people are getting married? Okay. I, not, yours. <laughs> not mine. Um, I went to a wedding in Chicago. And how I introduced myself, because this was totally the context, was, oh, I'm the first girlfriend of the father of the groom. Well, yeah. that's started conversations very, you know, um, very quickly. And it helped people figure out who I was because in the reality is in some social situations, they don't care if you're a best-selling author and president of whatever. They care, do you know the bride? Do you know the groom? How did you get here, etc. So that really worked. But what I did is instead of carrying a compact in my purse, I carried business cards Mm -hmm. And I met a couple of people who have since stayed in my life, bought the book, recommended me. So you don't use a wedding or a funeral or a bar mitzvah or a conference to sell other people, but be prepared. And if you'll notice, I said, bring cards with you at all times. Now, we live in the Silicon Valley where I've had people say to me, are you kidding? I haven't had a card in eight years. Well, you know what? That's no way to make a contact because if a contact wants a card because that's how they do business, have cards with you. 
Oh my goodness, I didn't turn off my answering machine, if you'll excuse me. Oh. All right. Well, while Susan is turning off her answering machine, because we turned off everything else. Oh my God, I always do. And this goes to show that you can always make a mistake, but if you admit your mistake, smack me on my hand for making a mistake. All right, good. And you're bringing up something that I'd like to teach my clients, and that is to be interesting, you have to be interested. Yes. And you notice that Susan passed off to the other person because to, to make it a real conversation. Now, now, Susan, we have really two sets of, of Frit VT users that are already signed up for this call. One is our business clients. We have some of our corporate accounts and one of them, the people from uh, my favorite clients in, in Bellevue and they are getting ready in January for their big company meeting. So what they will be doing is meeting executives from other teams. They're going to be meeting other parts of the company that they don't interact with and no doubt they'll be meeting some of their team members they've not met in person. So for our corporate clients who are going to the big company meeting which is a lot beyond their division and area, what specific advice would you give them to make sure they are noticed and memorable so it could pay off long term? Um, the first thing is if you know that there are people that you're connected to via team communication, email, et cetera, set up a time to say, would love to meet you. Uh, when would that work? So you're meeting people, but have the same attitude. Everywhere you go and everywhere you turn at your meeting, you're going to see someone with the same badge. Have a big smile on your face because you never know who that person might be or turn out to be. Be warm and welcoming and go over to people you don't know who might not look familiar and you might not be able to discern their name depending on your eyesight, go over to every person, introduce yourself. Even if you might have met them through a, you know, a webinar jam or a Skype call. And this is really important because some people might not recognize you. They'll be a little um, preoccupied. Introduce yourself handshake, say your name, and in this case, you'd want to say what division, etc., to every person you see. But also, at every event you go to, um, if people come into the room and you're already talking to people, here's what I want you to do. To be memorable, to make that great impression, when people are in a group and you see people in the periphery, take one step back. You will reset the circle and you will have included people who've been on the outskirts, who might be shyer than you are. They might be that 90% shy, and that will be memorable. But go to every event, go with a positive attitude, introduce yourself to people, um, and come with some nice things to say about people. You know, Patricia, so often we go to these places, we're so worried, what can we say about us? How about saying nice things about the people that you've worked with? Oh, it's been such a pleasure. I love what you did on that. That was so helpful. Thank you for doing that in an early and a timely way. Say things that are positive about other people. And I think that that's really important. Also, besides meeting everyone, know that 90% of them are still going to be uncomfortable. Be sure you follow up in a personal way within three days after the conference great meeting you at because that's how it starts the relationship that you build within the company and don't be daunted about if someone has a more important title than you they could be even shyer than you and you going over to them could be the kindest thing as well as the best strategy now in your book you talk about one executive uh, his first name is Bill but he always used to wear a Looney Tune tie with a specific goal in mind. Yes. At I when I spoke for this group, he was wearing at the and it's a seven billion dollar company, he's wearing a Looney Tune tie. I couldn't help it. I went over to him and said, uh, that's kind of interesting. This is a very big company. And he said to me, the reason I wear the Looney Tune tie is I want my 
senior VPs and their spouses who are at the event to feel comfortable to come over and talk to me. If I had worn the tie that, you know, my wife bought me at Marshall Fields, it wouldn't give them the opportunity or make them feel comfortable. So if you can wear a fun tie, a nice scarf, an interesting pair of interest, uh, earrings, men sometimes have like a, a school pin. Mm -hmm. Give people something to talk about that's visual that helps them start the conversation. And of course, don't drink too much at company meetings because business meetings are business. And it, it, you should never be so relaxed. This is, although it's a social event, it is not a party for yes. your own friends or family. It is still business. Now, Rowan, there's also the situation, and we both hear it in our seminars, what do you do if you recognize someone but you can't remember their name? It happens all the time. Sometimes I go past a mirror and I don't recognize that person. So here's what you do. And I learned this from a gentleman who was a VP, senior VP at the Harlem Globetrotters front office. He said to me, Susan, tell people every time they walk into a room, you may not have seen the person for six months. If you're struggling with their name, you can bet they don't know yours. He yeah. said, what you do is you always go over and reintroduce yourself. Put your hand out, say your first and your last name. And the reason he said this is 80 to 90% of the people will do exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. And then nobody's struggling for the name. Um, now, sometimes you'll say your name and once in a while there'll be a person not very socially adept who will say, well, I knew your name, and then they won't say anything. Mm -hmm. Now, it is very fair to say that person, you have the advantage. Would you be kind enough to remind me it's been one of those days? Mm -hmm. But a person who's well-schooled and has good etiquette and social manners will absolutely just do what you did. I think that's the way. Now, what happens if you don't remember a name and someone's wearing a name tag? All of us put your name tags on your right hand side if given an opportunity, because that's the line of sight with your handshake and people could sneak a peek at your name. But if you put it on the left side, people can catch you if you're looking. So you, we wanna be as deft as possible at looking at name tags, but always reintroduce yourself and then repeat the person's name so that you hear it yourself and that will help you remember it. Good. And if it is an, in, uh, because of course we're so multicultural, it might be a name that is more difficult. So I always say, now let me see if I know how to pronounce your name and think and say it as phonetically as possible as it looks. And uh, usually I hear, well, that, that's, but that's very close. So I'll say, can, can you say it again slowly? And so you're really making an attempt if it is an unusual name, because if you spend time really focusing on something unusual, it's amazing how you can often remember it a lot more. So that's good. Now, Paul, are there any specific questions from our listeners to give to Susan before we go to our next area? Yes. Um, in addition to taking a step back, how do you verbally expand your circle to the newcomer or the people on the periphery? How do you verbally expand? Well, you know, when you st here's the other thing. When you want to get into a group, because sometimes we walk into rooms and everyone's in a group. I call this breaking and entering in how to work room. What you do is pick a group that's already animated of at least three, preferably four people. Go and stand in the periphery. And when someone nods your way, agreeable body language, then you can step in. Now, someone else who is in a seminar of mine in New York said what she did is she did that but as soon as there was a slight pause, she would ask with this, she had a great smile, great etiquette. She would say, may I join you? Mm. And that way, she said, nobody ever said, no, not today. So quite, you're quite getting permission to join. Then you step in. Um, and then it's a matter of using eye contact, whatever you're saying, include the person from eye, with eye contact. 
And by the way, I'm going to make a plug. If you are at an event from your company and spouses are invited, please be wise enough and strategic and kind enough to include them when you speak with eye contact because that engages them and at least it makes them feel that they're part of the conversation. And here's a technique from our friend Judith Morgan Jennings who in her career she was in charge of publicity with Channel 2 television early in her career. Uh, now some of you are too young to know this but she was in charge of the guests and the publicity with the Michael Douglas show and in her career she has hosted many celebrities and their spouses and of course so many people they only want to talk to the celebrity and she had a great technique she would go up to someone and say Susan I know you will want to meet and introduce the spouse of the star that is great and that's that's something to remember because on the other hand I hear a lot from people who have been ignored and here's what one woman told me when I keynoted the mid-sized bankers. She, her husband was the executive of a bank and she said, who does his VP thinks he spends time with? Whether we're driving to take my kid to college, she goes, this man has never looked at me or acknowledged me at all. And she said, kind of, kind of my Chicago-based attitude, she goes, he is never getting a promotion. Because she says, I have the ear of his boss. And this is a very important element because obviously I teach our users uh, presentation skills. And you might have a presentation where there's the economic buyer. But anyone in the meeting is an influencer. They might not be able to say yes, but they certainly can sabotage <laughs> with a no. So they can, in everyone is going to influence. And that is a great example of spouses. Now let's go to our speaker friends and because a lot of our community course are speakers, consultants and coaches and authors like you and they go to the National Speakers Association and they go to their clients events. So I, I would like to, and you're open for your suggestions, but there is a certain etiquette with having your photo taken with someone well known. So for example, Dan Janelle, who you know, is quite a player at the National Speakers Association in his own right. He, uh, he, he is an expert in publicity and, and I remember I, he was one of the first speakers I went to learn about the internet from. So he is very established. He might not be quite as well known as I am in some in, in, with some newer speakers but somebody came up when we were engaged in a conversation now this was we were looking at each other Rowan we were obviously engaged in conversation and someone came up and said oh would you take my photograph with Patricia please um you know he said, he said after Patricia that is the third time I've been involved in conversation with someone not knowing who I am has come up and, and asked me to take a photo of the, with the other person. He said, I'm sick of it. Don't people have any manners to know when a conversation should not be interrupted? And that's the key. When you see two people together, that's why I always say to people, go over when it's three. Now, when you're seeing two people actually having an, an intense and interesting conversation, that's not the time. Now, what you could do is you could stand in their periphery, not right in front of them, and wait till their conversation is through. But I, I know Dan for years, and he is so well known and so uh, highly acclaimed in the area of, of PR and internet. And how insulting to him. So before we do that, before we ask a stranger, because obviously they didn't know him, to take a picture, we ought to think very carefully about the, imp the impression and who the other person might be. And this leads me, and you know I've said it, and that was the original title of my luck book, you never know. Exactly. Good. Paul, are there any more specific questions? Not right now. 
Good. Well, what I would like to do, if this is okay with you, Roanne, is we have, there is something that we do naturally that we realize most people don't do, and we realize that we have to teach our audiences to do that. This is, I always say, the best part of, of my advice when it comes to maximizing networking. And so we're going to hold that for a moment while... Paul, I would like you to bring up Frip VT. We are going to show our users what is new and exciting because we've created a couple of new courses and these are short. So you now have a course 13 and 14. Course 13 is on if you've got five minutes with an executive. So you, in the situation is imagine you're delivering a, a presentation, perhaps it's a webinar, and the, 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 your contact comes back and says, hey, Fripp, great news, our economic buyer, the real decision maker, is going to come in on our meeting for the first five minutes. No, you're going to do a great job. So how do you phrase that conversation when you've got five minutes? And in your Frip VT vault, of course, you have uh, you have all the handouts and the scripts. So you can see uh, Max now the new thirteen is maximize your executive overview, and then of course maximizing your next work opportunities, which is why I was so excited that Roanne could uh, organize her schedule to be our special guest. So, Paul, why don't you just quickly click on uh, the, I believe it's 20 techniques, is it right? Uh, learn, oh, 12 simple effective strategies. Now, the best one with this is the one that we're going to teach after, Rowan, because I say we saved the best for last. But just show people what it will look like, Paul. Patricia Fripp's philosophy is there is no point going anywhere that people don't remember you were there. You are smart enough to know networking is indispensable. However, if you go to a business or association event and no one remembers meeting you, you've wasted your time. Your goal is to make yourself memorable for all the right reasons. Here are 12 simple and effective strategies that let you walk into a room with quiet self-confidence that people will enjoy meeting you and remember you afterwards. All right, good, Paul. That's enough. That's just a teaser because we want them to go in and look at it. Why don't you just give them a quick teaser in the other one? If you're on the phone, a webinar, or in person, and you have a few minutes with an executive, what do you say to keep on track and stay professional? Here is an invaluable framework. Adapt it to your situation and boost your confidence and credibility. If you have to deliver an executive overview to a client or customer, be clear, concise, and credible. When you adapt this simple framework to your situation, you will get results. All right, that's enough of a teaser. Now, Paul, let's show them how they will never, ever, in the history of their lives, run out of content as long as they subscribe to Fripp VT. Because as you know, we have been having user meetings uh, I mean, ever since we launched Fripp VT, which is now several years. And so what we are doing, we are, and, and this is t very time <laughs> intensive doing it. So we are adding them to the Fripp VT user meetings. So if you just joined in the last few months or last two, year and a half or even two years, you will find there are there will be content you will have missed. We also, perhaps many of you might have signed up. I have a Fripp VT uh, sales series, and then we have other presentations. Uh, just the around presentation skills. So what we are doing, we are taking these. So for example, when you register, you get the replay link. The replay link 
uh, not so much for FIP VT meetings because that's private, that's just for you. But the others, they are alive and well on YouTube. But what we've done, we've taken the MP4s, we've chunked it into 20 minute segments, and we are putting them in this area. So, Paul, just uh, click on, for example, the, uh, the sales series just to show them what we've put so far. So we have build your business, your credibility. My interview with Andy Paul on amping up sales is brilliant. And with Kurt Shaver about using LinkedIn to expand sales. They are just the first ones that we've added. And Paul, where will they find this content? They will find this content in the training center. Now, since I'm an admin, my training center does look slightly different than yours, but you will have two options as an individual customer or maybe three if you're a corporate client. You'll have Frit VT, which is the 14 courses that we saw just a moment ago, and then you'll have the webinars section. So if you just click on the webinar section, you'll be brought to the category selection. All right, good, perfect. And we look forward to hearing your feedback. And so now let's go back to uh, our special guest, Susan Rowan. So we have a technique, Rowan, that I don't know what you call it, but when I talk about it, I call it travel with your own PR agent. What do you call it? You know, I call it us being us, but I think it is... <laughs> And I think we should tell people that how it happened. A woman came up to you and said, you just talked about Susan Rowan. I just heard her last week. She talked about you. Is that yeah. your strategy? And that's when we went, no, we just didn't even know the other one was doing it. So we adopted it. We no, all no, but let's look at the principle here, because what we did, I was on a radio show and in the commercial, Somebody said, you know, because I, I just talked about you, and she said, I had Susan Rowan on here a couple of months ago. And then remember when we were at Young Presidents Organization? Right. And one of our friends, the, the spouse of one of the other speakers, popped in your session, popped in my session, and she said after, uh, you know, I, I was in your session and you were talking about Fripp. I popped in Fripp's session at the same time she was talking about you. And then we had people saying, oh, I heard Susan Rowan. She was telling me this so, oh, and, and vice versa. And we realized, and this is very important whether you are part of a team or whether you're part of a professional association like the National Speakers Association, is the more you you genuinely promote and are generous with what you say about colleagues that you respect. We're not competing. Remember, the whole speaking industry is making the pie bigger. If you're in a, in a company or a team, the more you rave about your team, the more it elevates you that you're part of the team. So we, it, travel with your own PR agent. So now back to you, Rowan, with how you describe what we do. And, you know, to me, it's, and we learned it from Dr. Duffy Spencer, who I heard call it, be sure to good mouth people. Mm. Oh, I've not heard that expression. I wrote that. I, in I love it. She must have said that years ago at a conference, and we were talking about something that I did and I didn't have a name for it. And she said, oh, I tell everyone, she's a doctor of sociology, has her own radio show and practice. Be sure to good mouth people. We hear so much about the bad mouthing, by the way, far more interesting, but that's another <laughs> thing. <laughs> but say nice things about people. The other thing that I'm a big believer of, and I would only say English major who taught English, mm -hmm. and as an author, I am completely maniacal about giving credit where credit is due. So if I hear a good line or a good story, Patricia, I have quoted you on the benefit statement for how many years? I had someone say to me, well, you know, you could kind of own it now because you've talked about it. No, I can't. It did not originate with me. Give credit where credit is due, attribute, acknowledge. That way I bring Patricia in the room but if anyone ever heard Patricia say that, 
they won't wonder did Susan rip her off. Dr. Adele Sheely wrote in 1985, and this is a tip that I would give you all, everywhere you go, act like a host, mm -hmm. extend yourself, make others feel and this is the tip from Susan Rowan, try to make other people comfortable with you. But Dr. Del Sheely wrote that. And then she also said, don't act like a guest. Feed me, bring me a drink, tell me stories, amuse me. <laughs> to this day, it's all these years later, I quote Dr. Del Sheely. Other people have used that act like a host. They don't even know where they got it from. I think I have great grand plagiarizers. But they never even attribute it to Dr. Sheely. I think it goes with what Patricia said. You say nice things about other people. You give credit. And then really, you know what? Then people really want to be around you. Well, what I'm going to pick up what you said about not acting like a host. I mean, acting like a host. Don't act like a guest. Because, again, even though I'm, I'm a confident person, there are circumstances that I don't know as many people or I am a bit more uncomfortable and a couple of years ago I was at a big party in England at my cousin's and it was a beautiful day outside it was the the day after one of our other cousins sons had got married so a lot of the guests were over about 150 people and beautiful food etc now I knew some people but not that many because I don't live in the area anymore and I said Malcolm where are your garbage pails you know these they've they're finishing with their plates and they got nowhere to put them and he said, well, there aren't any. So I got garbage bags and I went around and said, have you finished? I'll take, you know, I'll take your paper plates and your cups. And what was wonderful is I had an excuse. Now, I'm not really shy, but this is great for shy people. You have an excuse to go and talk to people. And I found, oh, your Uncle Aubrey's children, I haven't seen you since I was seven. It was so much fun to get reintroduced to people you'd never recognize after 50, 60 years. And also, uh, you have an excuse. Well, are you enjoying it? Who are you? Who are you related to? Just like the wedding. And even in Malcolm's remarks, he said, I have to thank my cousin Patricia, who came all the way from San Francisco to collect your garbage. <laughs> but, but it made it, it really made it part of the event because I might, I might be outgoing, but I'm much more practical than I'm outgoing. So let's go back to specifically what do we do. So when Susan and I walk in and I'm Susan is chatting away to people because we walk in, we separate, we come together, we separate. And if I walk up to Susan, she's always very gracious. She say, oh, may I introduce to you my friend Patricia Fripp? And then you'll say something wonderful about me. Now, this is the line you remember. And I know Susan is far too modest to tell you because remember Rowan's pattern she is she is making pleasantries she's talking about the event the connection she's talking to them she's given the benefit but when I come up I say she's too modest to tell you she's the best-selling author of how many books do I have to remember now eight Eight. She's the best-selling author of eight books has been on the front cover of USA Today and and the Wall Street Journal and then of course we often talk about you've been in other publications well and I'm going to tell you and I will say this to the group I have been quoted five times in Maxim's men's magazine and I have to tell you that my own nephew saw my quote there and it canceled his subscription <laughs> Good, but you always say not as a centerfold. I know, and it uh, it actually annoyed me. They never asked for a picture. They just wanted my salient <laughs> points of wisdom. Good. Now, but the point, and this is the next point, and this is what makes this valuable. You become an object of interest. So you are not necessarily going to walk up and say, how do you do? I know you'd want to meet me. I'm a best-selling author of eight books, been on the front cover of USA Today and the Wall Street Journal. You're not going to do that. However, if somebody else does it for you, 
you become more of an object of interest because the people we meet are going to go to other groups at the networking event or convention. They're going to go to work the next day. Oh, what did you do? Oh, went to the mixer at the chamber. Was it good? Yes. Great food, interesting speaker, and wow, I met some fascinating people. Who did you meet? A best selling author who? So again, as, uh, as we teach you in, in speaker in, in SR, in as we teach you in FRIP VT, all right, I just, I'm still jet lagged, we speak to be remembered and repeated. And yes. I would like to add, Patricia, how I introduce Patricia. I say, oh, have you met Patricia Fripp? Oh my goodness, she is the most amazing professional speaker she is the finest executive speech coach. And I will often add, because I'm so proud of this for you, the first woman president of the National Speakers Association. And that way, you know, people know you have the experience speaking, that you have been coaching the finest, highly rated, because if you, and you can't just say these things as if you're reading it off a list, you must say them with, and I'm going to tell you this is what makes the difference, as you heard Patricia do of me, with enthusiasm and respect. Mm. And that way, other people go, oh, that's so interesting. Because I remember when we did this, that it was a convention and visitor bureau. And people were so amazed to hear two people say so many wonderful things about each other. Mm. And this, this works very well, of course, in your in your corporate world, be proud of your leader. So you can say it is a real privilege to work in Greg Stiver's team. So it's it's again, be respectful, be proud of the group that you're part of. It will it will be remembered for all the right reasons. And Paul, are there any more questions that we have to answer? Not right now. They're riveted. Good, they're riveted. That's what we like. And there was, oh yes, Steve Ball. And we're talking in a in a corporate environment. Steve, but Steve Ball runs a group in Microsoft. He's also one of my brother's best friends and a crafty guitarist. Uh, but he has a superb way. Whenever I have been with him and he takes me around and introduces me to his team members, he is wonderfully respectful and, and enthusiastic. Oh, and, and by the way, she's also the sister of Robert Fripp, a great guitarist. If you remember, he made the boot up sound for the Vista program. And then uh, he, Steve does a wonderful job at letting me know why I would want to meet this team member. It really is, it, it makes the people he's introducing feel good and hopefully they, they're, they're more likely to come to the session I'm going to deliver for him. So that's good. Now Susan, as we have some professional speakers the other side of our corporate, when you are at a convention, you have been hired to speak. Uh, perhaps you're a breakout speaker, you might not be the keynote, but you're at the convention. How can you maximize that event at the coffee breaks and luncheons and perhaps social events at the convention you attend? Well, the first one is, and you and I both do that, we do not swoop in and swoop out. So if you're the invited speaker, you make sure that if you're not running off to another speech, that you are there for the luncheon, the reception, etc. We know a couple of shy speakers who say, oh, I can't be bothered with that. Mm. That is so foolish. You're wasting such a great opportunity for spin-off business, for getting to know people. So A, make sure you RSVP and say that you are available. And when you go there, remember, you are still part of the, uh, the business of the speaking. But how about this? This is, again, not the time for you to get so comfortable that you're saying things that you shouldn't say around clients. But you can maximize it every time you go, uh, whether you're going to the health club, whether you're going to the, you know, for a walk. Every person that you see is someone you ought to know. They're going to know you because you did a session 
Make sure that you smile, say hello, introduce yourself. Be sure to be there. You can go to the website and see who's signed up ahead of time so you know a little bit about the people. And of course, you can go to their LinkedIn to learn a little bit more so you're not walking into rooms full of strangers. But if you are the speaker, embrace the event. Go to, if they have like a fun event, I spoke for a group in Palm Springs and they were the people who do fundraising in the healthcare industry. They had a great event the night before. I made sure I went. There was another one that did something where they did games. They said, wear your favorite college, whatever. Well, I went to University of Illinois. I wore orange and blue. And I never shot a dart in my life. I was shooting darts. I was doing things. Participate. Mm. But don't be the person that they always see, as you said, with a bottle of beer every hour you know, modify. The other one is don't be the person that loads your plate with foods. And this is another one. Please be very careful about humor that is at the expense of other people. I know there's some people that think that's so funny. I'm going to make fun of you and jab you. Don't do that. Bring great stories, great points. Um, you can share what you saw on TV. I mean, I often share what I heard Trevor Noah say, or we love the Big Bang Theory. We talk about those lines. But be a person of humor, but be very careful about the humor and never off color. Never. Good. Perfect. So, Paul, if we can bring up, do we have a poll? Was this information valuable? And then let's go over to, uh, if you can do that, and then let's go over to uh, Roanne's website. Because, as you know, or as you can imagine, when you are a best selling author, everyone in the world uh, wants to buy you a cup of coffee. And you cannot have a cup of coffee conversation about how would I write a book proposal? How do I find a publisher? How do I actually write a book? So, based on our conversations, Rowan, you came up with an aspect of your business which you call Pick My Brain Consulting. Because everyone wanted to pick my brain, and I honestly saw all the good gray matter floating out, and I was left with the rust and stuff. Mm. And, oh. and Patricia, this is the credit to Patricia. One day, someone wanted to buy me coffee, and I said, okay. And I came back, and, and Patricia said, Rowan, that was the biggest waste of your time. What coffee you said to me, that wasn't worth the time it took for you to put on makeup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So be respectful. Any anyone in the speaking uh, business will give you give you a couple of minutes of their time. But when you really want a consulting project, you need to be prepared to do that. For example, Terry Brock, one of our very good friends and colleagues, brilliant with technology. I said, Terry, I want to hire you to tell me how that you can, how we can do these webinar jams because we want to be up and professional fast. So you will be very glad to know that 100% of our live audience, and I certainly hope our replay audiences, saw this information was very valuable. So, uh, now, Rowan, for the 50% of our audience who has not uh, heard of your book, and some of those that heard might have read that might want to buy, you are w probably the only speaker that I know that does not say come to my website and buy my book. You support bookstores. So if someone was interested, where would you recommend they go and buy your book? Well, first of all, you can come to my website where it says books and it will lead you to options. Ah. Um, yes, you could go to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, but I'm going to make the plea because I've become a best-selling author because of independent bookstores. If you have an independent bookstore in your area, please support them because they hire local people, kids in school, etc. cetera. Um, if that doesn't work for you because you don't have an independent bookstore, go to a chain. They still hire local people. But also... Powell's Bookstores in Portland, who many people have heard of because it's, it's actually the largest bookstore in the world, 
happens to be owned by Mike and Alice Powell. Alice, Carlin Powell, and I went to Boone Elementary School together. So it would be really important to me that you support an independent bookstore, um, support your own, buy through Powell's.com or IndieBound, which also has um, an, on, an online site that you can get through your local bookstore. And by the way, they will be happy to order it for you. So I know that there are people who said, what do you mean you don't sell your books? You know, no, let's support the economy and our local people. All right. Well, that with that wonderful thought, thank you very much, Roanne. I look forward to our next adventure. Last night we went to see Tango Lovers, oh, and my gosh, how those bodies work! You wouldn't think a body could do the way their little legs went around. It. Absolutely fascinating experience. But again, it gives us something to talk about. So, with that, may I encourage you, challenge you to go take advantage of the new content and to go find the, the webinars and look at the different subjects. You of course will be invited to uh, more webinars coming up in the near future and as always it doesn't matter if you're in a different country which many of our, our users are if the time doesn't work for you as long as you register you receive the replay. And of course, soon you will have more and more of the past sessions within your FRIP VT system. So, Paul, are there any announcements or any other questions we need to handle before we wave goodbye? Well, in the chat box, there is the coaching link for Susan's or for Susan Rand's site. Thank so good. There, and there's also a pop-up offer if they do want to get a copy of the book, they can just click on that offer and it'll take them straight to Powell's. Oh. Well, wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Paul. And with that, thank you for support of Frit VT. And remember, we appreciate all recommendations. All your friends can take a trial, as you probably did when you first signed up, of openings, stories, and sales. And remember, all speaking is public speaking. And the only way you will learn any skill is with repetition and reinforcement. Check out your Frit VT every week. Bye. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Ray.